Hi, this is Jim, your uh, product expert with Water Pumps Direct, coming to you with another Q&A video for your viewing enjoyment. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, shallow well pumps, delve into it a little bit deeper and uh, go a little bit more into it and tell you about, a little bit how, more about how they work. Um, first of all, if you're replacing a pump um, on a shallow well pump, you know the, the pump, you've got it there, you've got a model number um, and a brand name, that always makes it a lot easier for everybody involved. Uh, to find a suitable replacement for that pump. Um, so if you're looking for something like that, get a model number off the pump, not off the motor, because the motor is just going to give motor specs on it, and that's not going to help us. We need a model number off the actual pump end of the pump. Um, brand name, uh, more often than not, we can look that up and find out what the pump is, find the specs on it, and find if we don't have the exact same thing, find a suitable, suitable replacement for you. So that's the first thing on, on shallow well pumps. Um, Basically on shallow well pumps, those pumps are designed to handle a suction lift of up to 25 feet of suction head lift. So when we talk about suction head lift, we're talking about vertical lift from the pump inlet to the water surface. In the case of a, a well, sometimes maximum drawdown. So when you're pumping water out of that well, if that water drops down while you're pumping, how far down does that drop? Um, that's what that means. So, um, they will generally have about a one or a one and a quarter inch inlet on those pumps. That's the uh, inlet right over here you see in the front of the pump. Um, you never really want to reduce the size of that piping. So if you've got a one and a quarter inch inlet on that pump like you see here, uh, you don't want to connect it to a one inch or a three quarter inch pipe. You're going to starve the pump for what it's designed to run on. Um, these pumps are designed to pull in a certain amount of water and push out a certain amount of water and hence the reason for that inlet diameter. Um, so if you're starving that pump, it's going to start cavitating the impeller. That pump will start failing on you, and it won't last long. You're going to just make that pump work harder. Um, another thing on these pumps is they'll pull water out of anything, whether it's a well, a lake, um, pond, any kind of water source you might have. Uh, anytime you can minimize that suction lift, that's going to be a good thing for the pump, too, and it'll give you better performance. Uh, in the case of a pond or a lake or something like that, you're pulling out of that. <clears throat> if you can minimize that to about five feet or so, you'd be doing a great service to the pump. It's always easier for the pump to push water out through the discharge or through the top of the pump than it is to pull it in from the front of the pump. Just easier to do. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, on the discharge side of the pump, they usually are going to be equal or one size smaller than the suction side. So you may have a one and a quarter inch suction and a one inch discharge. You don't really want to reduce that either um, on that piping. Um, if you do, it's a little, pumps are a little bit more forgiving. They can handle that a little bit better. Um, I always tell people don't go any more than one size down. So if it is a one inch discharge, don't go any more than three quarter inch pipe. pipe. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're running a long distance on that, on that discharge, um, three, four or 500 feet, you're going to have to actually increase the diameter of that piping to minimize friction loss. Um, so basically, the longer you're piping, you're, the longer you're pumping water through a pipe, and the smaller that pipe is, the less surface area there is in that pipe, and there's a lot more friction of that water moving through that pipe in that distance. Longer the distance, more friction loss, not good. You're, you're losing flow, you're losing pressure and all that. You have to increase the size of that pipe diameter to minimize the friction loss and maintain or uh, get a better grip on your GPM and your actual flow rate what that pump is designed for. Um, so that's on the suction and discharge. Um, if you have to pump, move that pump away from your water source, again, you're, you've got no other option but to have that pump 300 feet away um, you may still have a five foot lift, but you're moving the pump a longer distance away. Again, you're going to have to increase the size of that suction pipe to allow for friction loss. So that kind of gives you a pretty good idea on how that works. Um, wiring and all these is all per national uh, state and uh, national electric code. Um, as long as you're sizing these pumps properly and installing them right, they should last you for quite a long time. So. Hopefully this helps you a little bit on uh, how these pumps work and what they do. Uh, if you have any other ideas for Q&A videos, any other questions, shoot me an email, give me a call. Check out our website, waterpumpsdirect.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, you all have a great day. Take care.